Hi guys, I'm back. <laughs> I have lost 100 pounds and I want to talk about it. Hi, I'm Andrea. Welcome to my channel. I need more lives. Okay, sorry it has been so long since I've made an update. I have been on a keto diet where I have a weekly cheat, which is just a few bites of food per week of pretty much anything that I want. During the week I eat close to zero carbs if I eat any carbs at all. It's usually going to be only vegetables. I'm not eating anything to throw myself off of my diet through the week. So with that being said, I have lost a hundred, well over a hundred pounds, but this video is specifically talking about me losing a hundred pounds. I did it within about five months. Now I want to say that that five months I did it really, really quickly and I was super focused on exercise and diet. Right now, uh, I'm going through a little bit of a funk. I do have a little bit of depression, so I have slacked off on the exercise part and sometimes the diet part, and it has shown and reflected in my weight loss. I have only lost 15 more pounds, and it has been like three months <laughs> that I've lost five pounds a month or something. It is slowing down right now because I'm not super focused on it. I was just really happy to get to that 100 pound mark, you know? It's, like 100 pounds off of me and it happened so quickly that my mind didn't like have a time to catch up with my body. You know, there's there's always going to be people that don't acknowledge your weight loss. Uh, they just don't even notice it. They do notice, but they don't say anything. I don't have those people in my life anymore. <laughs> The last time I lost 100 pounds, I had done it rapidly as well. This time, I feel like this is different. I feel like this is going to be my new kind of life because I really enjoy eating this way. I'm not the type of person who likes to go for a walk just because, oh, I like walking, because I don't. I don't like to go for walks. I like being outside. I just don't like the act of getting there. So I, I hate exercise, really. But eventually I get to a point where my body craves it and that's why I do it because I feel antsy. Like I need to move, like I need to do it, right? But I'm usually the type of person that needs some kind of incentive to do things. Like if I'm gonna go for a walk, um, I need to be going somewhere. I need to arrive somewhere and do something there if I'm gonna go for a walk, you know? And it's it's the same thing for throughout my whole life with everything, it's, it's the same thing. So like my incentive to go on a walk is to take my kids to the park. So I walk at the park with my kids and that's my exercise. But recently I've been going through some depression. I wanna make another video on it because my video has helped me and it has helped others, but it has helped me in a way. The video was talking about phantom smells, and that video helped me to discover that I was not the only one. I talk about this in my daily vlog channel, Fully Living. There's a few videos about depression. Usually what accompanies my depression are phantom smells. I believe because I used to have periods of time where I had years of phantom smells at a time where I would just smell the worst things imaginable all the time. And now my time in these periods are weeks or days instead of years, months or years. So I believe that that video helped me to deal, give me some coping <laughs> mechanisms, I don't know, to deal with the depression that comes along with those phantom smells because it is quite depressing. It's debilitating too. Sometimes it's really hard to get out of bed. I have to get out of bed. That's my motivation to get out of bed are my kids because they need to eat, they need to learn, they need to play. It, it would just be a madhouse if their schedule, like I'm not a scheduled person, but if their schedule was messed up somehow just because I'm sick, that becomes a madhouse. And not only me would be depressed, but my kids would be like out of control. So we can't have that happen. I have to get up and do things regardless of how I feel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> some some days I feel like I'm mailing it in because I'm not doing what I want to do with my kids and I'm not doing as much as I want to do, but that's depression. It's not just the fact that you're not interested in doing anything or doing new things or do it, doing anything. <laughs> doing, brushing your teeth, just doing things, anything. But also everything is like a hundred times harder when you're 
in a depressed state. Sometimes I do feel like I'm mailing it in, so that is why I've kind of slacked off on exercising for the past month or so. But right now, I'm trying to work myself into it because I know that exercise is really good for depression. So I'm trying to get back out at the park, walk to the park, take my kids there to play. I have a couple of times, it's not like they never go to the park. They go to the park a lot. If I don't take them, my husband definitely takes them. But I want to take them. I want to play with them. I want to film them at the park, you know? But that's another thing. If I take the camera with me, because we are daily vloggers, we film our life. If I take the camera with me, I feel like I'm not gonna get as good of a workout. So I haven't been taking the camera with me and that's been kind of a, a really good thing for me to live without a camera. We have done that actually a couple times on date night and that was really nice to just go out and do stuff and not have an obligation to film it. Not an obligation, but if you don't film what you're doing, then you don't have content for your blog. You know what I mean? So we film every day our life and you know, that's, <laughs> that's content for our vlog. So if we go out and I'm not taking the camera, then I miss those opportunities not to film the kids while they're playing or not to film us while we're out. But it's good to have that, that reset where we're just, you know, just living. I don't have to speak. My husband doesn't have to speak and we j can just enjoy the moment without having to look through the lens. So during this whole time that I have uh, lost 100 pounds, it's been like really it's mind, it messes with your mind and I've had to do a lot of mind work and I write in my book a lot. Not so much typing but when you write something down and my book is pretty full. I write down how I feel. I write down ideas for videos, you know. I write down everything. I write down how much I weigh at the time and if I'm feeling good with what I'm eating. I'm also kind of experiencing some, it's almost like I'm pregnant, I'm not pregnant. But you know those food aversions that you get when you're pregnant? I cannot smell raw eggs, it just makes me so sick. Sometimes dishes will have like a smell on it and I have to scrub them, scrub them, scrub them. The smell, like tinge of leftover food or eggs, I don't know what it is. I know there's not really a smell on it, but I'm having severe food aversions right now. So basically all that I'm eating, I'm extremely attracted to ice. Like I was in a freezer the other day and I wanted to eat the ice, the dirty ice that was inside of this freezer at the grocery store. And I think it's because, okay, my battery died, sorry. No, I was talking about the ice. I, I have severe, severe craving for ice, like crackhead severe, okay? And I think, dead battery, because I read online that when you have like severe cravings for ice, it usually means that you are deficient in iron. I have not had my blood check for quite a long time and I'm actually, I was due back like sometime last year to get my blood checked and I haven't done it. I have some issues with my kidneys right now. I feel pretty good, but I may not be doing good. I'm not sure. but. <laughs> Uh, food aversions, it's probably not a good thing. Right now, I only crave ice, jello. They don't have like sugar free jello here. We get some kind of other gel stuff. They call it jelly here. I make Kool Aid ice that I make with stevia so it has no sugar in it. At the store, it's very expensive. It's 27 shekels, like $8 for 10 ice bars that have no sugar in them. I'm a fiend for ice right now though. A crazy. I'll see if my iron is low. I have been taking iron supplements and the ice craving is still there. It is still really strong. So and bacon. Did I say bacon? Right now I'm having a food aversion starting on bacon. Like how can that even happen? Probably because I was eating it for about three months <laughs> straight and that's all that I was eating. So bacon, celery with peanut butter and that is like one of the only foods that I eat right now that has carbs in it. I will have that at night sometimes when I'm really just needing something that has no sugar in it. Let's see. Oh, and lunch meat. So really unhealthy foods right now that I'm craving just because they're processed foods. They're still good for keto because I get sugarless, everything is sugarless. So still good for keto, it's just meat, but not really good for my health. So that is what I have been eating and that is what I've been doing for exercise. All I'm doing is walking. Usually I walk once a day and while I'm 
at the park. I will walk around the park and just let the kids run wild because there's nobody at that park during the day. All the kids are in school. That's that's a really good time for me and my kids and plus it gets them really tired. Like that one is taking a nap in my bed right now. We have a two bedroom house. We live in a tiny house right now. My daughter has to sleep by herself because she's too little and she just gets out of bed and she bothers him so they can't sleep. So today we have already been walking today and then we came home, we ate lunch, we took a bath and we're going to start the second half of our day today. That's my diet and that's my exercise. So what I'm doing for my mental health while I'm losing weight because I still have just about the same amount of weight that I need to lose because I've lost 115 and I need to lose at least 90 more. So 100 more pounds to lose. And I think back at the beginning of my journey and I'm like, while I was extremely ready, I didn't mentally prepare for it. I'm, I did kind of, but I don't think you really can mentally prepare to lose a lot of weight. As you lose weight, you realize people treat you differently. They talk to you differently. They think that you're less stupid. My daughter is kind of up. Like the more weight on you, the less brain cells that you have. Really untrue. I am the same person when I started this journey as I am right now. Literally the same person. I deal with the same things. I deal with the same things the same way. When I'm stressed and I used to eat, I still eat. I just eat different foods, but I still eat. I'm not the type of person that is like, oh, I'm so stressed. I can't eat. I've never been that way. When I get stressed, I eat and I eat a lot. But now I can eat a lot if I want to, but I eat different foods. I'm eating meat instead of donuts. <laughs> Let's just throw it out there. Or instead of anything else, you know, because I could, uh, I binged one time on onions before. Ugh. I, I cooked a whole bunch of onions up. I ate them all because that's all that I had, but I wanted that like sweet savory. So I ate that. That's terrible, but that's, that, that's who I am. I'm a binge eater and that's what I do. And when I'm stressed, I like to eat. That hasn't changed and I don't think it ever will change because I've tried to transfer my bad habits into good habits to pick good habits uh, when I'm stressed out, maybe go for a walk. I don't like walking. So how was that ever going to transfer into a new habit? I don't know. I try to do good things for myself. Uh, I try to lock the kids out of the bathroom and I try to take a bath for maybe 30 minutes while they're taking a nap. I'm getting messages, hold on. By the way, we just hit 100K on uh, Fully Living, 100K subscribers. So thank you if you're one of those people who has subscribed to our vlogging channel. And I'm, I'm getting a scroll <laughs> of congratulations. So that's really nice. Anyway, so I think that that was all that I wanted to talk about how I lost the weight. But keep in mind, I'm still big and I am only halfway done right now. So I feel like, I, I feel like, yeah, I should celebrate this because I lost 100 pounds. And I have 100k subscribers, but uh, I feel like I should celebrate this, and I haven't because I'm not there yet. But I feel like even when I do get there, and I've done this before, even when I do get there, it won't be good enough. And I, I was thinking to myself the other day, when is it going to be good enough? Because like if I weighed 140 pounds, I'm still only five foot zero, okay? So if I weighed 140 pounds, I'd still be fat, fat. So when is it that I'll be done? You know, I, I'll never be done. And on this journey of weight loss, since I still, I am the same person that I was, you know, several months ago when I weighed 115 pounds more, it's never going to be done. It's never going to be done. I'm, I'm always going to be a big girl looking at myself in the mirror, looking at a big girl, even if I lose all the weight. And I'm going to want less of me. I'm going to want to weigh less. I'm going to want more, always. Uh, and I was talking to my friend the other day and you know we just always want something that we can't have or that we don't have. And 
I was telling her, yeah, I when I was a kid, I wanted curly hair. And when I got curly hair, I wanted straight hair, you know, because I have wavy hair. I just thought to myself as a kid, man, I'm never going to be happy. I wanted it. I got it. And now I want something else. So, uh, you know, I have to work on being happy right now, right where I am. And I am. I'm not like a fat advocate. I'm a people advocate. I want people to feel good however they look. And I don't think that you should be judged by how you look. And I hope that if I do reach my goal weight, that like my bigger friends will never look at me and think that, oh, she, she's too good for us now, you know, because I'm going to have the weight loss. I never see people with weight on them. And that's one weird thing about me. Like when I look at pictures of my husband now when he was overweight, I'm like, wow, you were a lot bigger there. I have never seen him that way. When I saw him in person, I didn't think he was bigger, but now seeing him as a smaller person, I can see that he was bigger. So it's just, it's weird. I have like body dysmorphia, not just for me, but for other people too. <laughs> like I can't see anybody as being anybody but themselves. And it's really weird. I think it's good that I have that ability, but uh, it's bad at the same time for me because I've, I feel like I'm a lot smaller than what I am. So when I see myself in the mirror, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> you know, but I think everybody deals with that. And you never really know what you look like until you like have pictures of yourself. Or in our case, we film ourselves every day. So I get to see it up close and personal every single day. I get to see what my face looks like, what my body looks like up close. And not just through my own perspective, but through a camera lens. So I get to see what everybody else is seeing. So it's, that's been hard on my brain too. Okay, sorry again. <laughs> anyway, I think I, w I want to make a, another video uh, telling you what I'm doing to kind of like get my mind right and get my mind into the right here and now instead of looking forward to the future, even being dreadful about the future because I don't want to be dreadful about the future. I want to have, I don't know. I want to look forward to it, but at the same time, I don't want to be anxious about it and worrying about it. I don't want to worry about the future. I want to live right now. I think I talk about this a lot when I think everyone should experience it. I, I think everyone should experience exactly what it's like to film yourself every day and to watch the progress for every day. A year ago, not even a year ago, like six, six, seven, eight months ago, when I started this, uh, I, I couldn't imagine being the size that I am today. When I see myself today, I still think that I'm big. I, I know I'm big, but when I see myself today, I still am thinking that I'm going to be big when I see myself and then I see myself come on camera. You know, my husband will film me and he'll get like, almost my whole body and I'm like oh I'm not that big I mean I I am I'm still big <laughs> let's let's talk general terms here um I was really big and you're gonna find out in my next video when I lose 150 pounds because I'm losing 150 pounds I've never lost 150 pounds I have only ever lost 100 pounds and I've done it three times so I'm past 100 pounds I'm already past it, so I broke it. I broke that mold, my mold of only losing 100 pounds. And this is the third time that I've lost 100 pounds and I'm ready to lose 150 and then maintain my weight. I've already got the secret to maintaining my weight for me. And that is to look forward every week to a cheat. That, that didn't used to be my secret because I would cheat and then I would cheat the next meal, and then the next meal, and so on. Well, right now, my husband, he's a little militant, and he keeps me from eating too much. Or he, he puts me, he, he checks me a lot, okay? He, he checks me. <laughs> right, you already have that. You can't have that. You can't have any more. So he, j he does check me. But it's good, because I asked him for his help. And that's how he helps me, <laughs> by telling me not to eat anymore. I just, I'm doing really good, but I'm in a weird space right now. I'm like halfway in between depression at the moment. And 
I'm coming out of it and I feel a little motivated to do more. I'm very hopeful too. There's a lot going on behind the scenes than what you see. We're looking to move overseas. We're going to move from Israel to Florida. That in itself is a job. <laughs> I have to sell everything that we own. I'm constantly swimming in our stuff, which I don't like. We're trying to go minimalist, but at the same time, we also need to make money to move overseas. So we're swimming in our stuff right now while I'm listing it for sale on Facebook groups and the, you know, the for sale. Yeah, so it's, it's a lot. It's a lot right now. That is one thing. I also have a job that I work in Israel, so that's another thing. And I have vlogging and I have the weight loss channel, which has taken a big hit because I haven't uploaded for like three months. I have my cooking channel, which I'm uploading all of my organizing and cleaning videos too because, you know, that's all that I can do right now. And then I have Raphael's Kitsch channel, Fully Fun, and I'm uploading one video a week to that. So it's just, it's a lot of work. Uh, it's a lot of work right now. I know that there is going to be a season very soon where it's going to be less work and it's going to be more fun. And I am looking forward to that. At the same time, I'm trying to enjoy what I'm doing now and know that it won't last forever. Right now, my kids are little and they're at home still. And I'm really, really enjoying the time that I have with them one-on-one. -on -one. Before they go into school and then they become their own little people. Like, I'm, I'm enjoying them right now. I do have that to look forward to every day and to get up for. Uh, I was thinking about making, and let me know in the comments if you would like this, making a video where I show you everything that I eat in a day and I also eat it on camera while talking, answering questions or talking to you about a random story, I don't know, but just doing like a mukbang type video and showing you all of the meals that I eat in a day. So if that would be interesting for you to see like the portion sizes that I'm eating, the frequency of food that I eat in a day, like sometimes I eat three to four times a day, sometimes five, and I love desserts, <laughs> my, my frozen desserts. So if you would like to see something like that with me eating keto foods, let me know. I'm thinking about doing that once a week so I can keep this channel going instead of updating every three months when I've lost weight. <laughs> I don't want to run out of steam because when I do and I don't have my channel to keep me accountable then sometimes i slip back into oh when i lose 10 pounds i'll make another video but that never happens so that i don't want that to happen this time losing weight for me it's not just a one-time thing apparently it's it's three times so hopefully this time will be the last time and you can watch me maintain my weight and i'll do mukbangs to show you my maintenance food at that time. Right now I'm just working on living and being the best that I can be right now at this weight and these feelings and this situation. And there's a lot going on. Yeah, there's just a lot going on. So hopefully I will be back next week. I'm hoping to upload at least two videos a week on this channel, that's what I hope. If you have any suggestions for videos that you would like to see me do, let me know. So if somebody leaves a comment down below that you like, hit the like button on their comment so that I can see it and maybe I'll make a video on it. I will talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to check out last week's video and my other channels, Fully Living, Fully Cooked, and Fully Fun. Have a great day.